All right, so heading into the last chapter for the semester, and uh, we're going to start with section 5.1. The title of the uh, chapter is uh, Antiderivatives. And that's the old school name back when I was um, studying calculus. And then the new school name is called Integrals. And essentially, we're going to be doing derivatives in reverse in this chapter. Um, let me just write a bunch of, of functions down. So I'm going to write um, y equals 5x squared, and maybe y equals 5x squared plus 7, y equals 5x squared minus 9, and y equals 5x squared plus 128. For each of these functions, if I want to find its derivative, it's not terribly hard. The derivative of this first function, y prime, or I could write dy dx if I care to. The derivative of this function is 10x. Similarly, because the derivative of 7 is 0, the derivative of the second function is also 10x. The derivative of the third function is also 10x because the derivative of 5x squared is 10x. The derivative of minus 9 is 0. And the derivative of the fourth function is also 10x. In section 5.1, we're going to be given a notation that asks us to find the function that has that as its derivative. So this symbol right here is called an integral symbol, or an antiderivative symbol. And this symbol right here is called an antiderivative symbol. And this problem written like this is asking me to find the function whose derivative is 5x, whose derivative is 10x. So this is asking me to find actually all functions or equations, we'll say functions is probably a better name, that have a derivative of 10x. Well, there's four of them right there, because 5x squared has a derivative of 10x, 5x squared plus 7 has a derivative of 10x, 5x squared minus 9 has a derivative of 10x, 5x squared plus 128 has a derivative of 10x. So in order to figure out a generic way to say all these functions and a lot more have a derivative of 10x, we write the answer in this form. And I'll show you how to get that answer here in a second. But I claim that any function that's written in the form 5x squared plus some number without an x, and we usually give that number that without an x a c, that's called a constant. So the 7, the negative 9, and the 128 are all constants. All of these functions are going to have a derivative of 10x because the derivative of 5x squared is 10x. And this plus c means plus or minus any number that doesn't have a letter. And this piece right here, because it doesn't have a letter, when you take its derivative, you're going to get 0. So the antiderivative of 10x dx um, is 5x squared plus any number c. In order to get an antiderivative, we're going to do the reverse of integrating. When we integrate, we multiply the coefficient by the exponent, and then we subtract 1. When we take when we derivative, we multiply the exponent by the coefficient, we lower the exponent by 1. We're going to do exactly the opposite when I integrate. <sighs> Ugh. Sorry for the slow start. When we integrate, we do exactly the opposite. Instead of m 
subtracting one from the exponent, we add one to the exponent. And instead of multiplying by the new exponent, we divide by the new exponent. So here, this is really 10x to the first. When I integrate, I'm going to take my exponent. Instead of subtracting one, the opposite of subtracting is adding. And then that gives me a 2. And instead of multiplying by 2, I'm going to divide by 2. That's going to give me this piece here, because 10 divided by 2 is 5 x to the 1 plus 1 gives me x squared. And then I always emphasize there's lots of functions that have the derivative of 10x, because all of these functions, plus a million more functions, have the derivative of 10x. Any function that's written 5x squared plus or minus a number is going to have a derivative of 10x. And so when I say the antiderivative or the integral of 10x dx, these, these are just notations that we need in here. This notation, when you put the function you want, that you want to find the integral of um, in this symbol with a, a kind of a squiggly s before it and a dx after the function, this is asking me to find the function that has the derivative of 10x. Of course, if this said 10y, the, the dx would be a dy. If this said 10t, the dx would be a dt. So this notation is the antiderivative notation. And what's ever written between these two symbols, our goal is to find the function that has that as its derivative. And 5x squared has 10x as its derivative. Technically, 5x squared plus any number has 10x plus as its derivative. So we have our first rule for finding the integral or antiderivative of a function that we're going to, and it's kind of the only rule we're going to get until the very end of the section. And the rule says this, the derivative of a, the integral of a times x to the n power dx equals, I'm going to add one to the exponent and divide by the new exponent and then add on a plus c because any function that has a constant without a letter when you take its derivative that turns to zero and this formula is good for all values of x except x equal to negative one because if i gave you a function like this the integral of say five x to the negative one dx if i applied this rule i'd say this is five x to the negative 1 plus 1 divided by what this exponent simplifies to negative 1 plus 1 is 0 plus c and you're going to get undefined. Right at the end of the section I talk about what to do with this integration rule when the exponent is a negative 1 but we don't need to jump into that yet. So I'm going to do a bunch of problems, a bunch of antiderivative problems, and I'm going to check the first few problems. Eventually, I'm going to stop checking. Uh, by checking, I'm going to take the derivative of my answer and make sure it's the, I guess, integrand, I think I would call that, the expression that's under the integral sign. All right, so into the section. Numbers 1 through 32, and that's ki kind of all there is in this section. There's a problem 33 and 34 that I'm going to do, but most of the work is going to be through problems 1 through 32. How do I find an antiderivative? When I find, so these two symbols, the integral sign and the dx by themselves, tell me to find a function that has 2x cubed as its derivative. And how do I do it? I add one to the exponent. The exponent started off at 3. I'm going to add 1 to 3 and get 4. I'm going to divide by the new exponent, which is 4. And then I put on a plus c, because any function, if I take its derivative, the piece that doesn't have an x has a derivative of 0. Now I'm going to simplify this. So I'm going to say the integral, of, or the antiderivative, of 2x cubed dx equals, and this comes out to be 1 half, or x to the fourth over 2 plus c. I'm done. This is my answer. I don't need to check it, but just because it's the first problem, I'm going to check it. And how do I check it? I take the derivative of each of the two pieces here. To take the derivative of this, I would go 4 times 1 half 
I lower the exponent by 1, and then the derivative of a, of a constant is 0. Any term that doesn't have an x, this, this implies any number without an x, would have a derivative of 0. And now the 4 times 1 half is 2. I leave the x squared and I don't need to, the x cubed, and I don't need to write the plus 0. That's the number that's not part of the integral notation that I'm shooting for. So I know my answer is right because I took the derivative of my answer and I got what was in between the integral sign and the dx. So you should be able to do the same for number 1. So I'm going to do number 4. I'm going to find the integral of 1 half x dx and that x has an, an implied exponent of 1. I'm going to add 1 to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. When I do that, adding 1 to the exponent and dividing by the new exponent, I drop the dx and I drop the integral symbol. I also put on a plus c because any function that has a piece that has a number without a letter, when you take its derivative, that derivative is 0. Now I need to worry about this, 1 half over 2. That needs to be simplified, and that's really the same as 1 half divided by 2. And dividing can be made into a multiplication by just flipping what you're dividing by. Dividing by a number, it's actually dividing by 2 over 1, is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. This whole thing is going to come out to be 1 fourth. So I claim the answer to problem 4 is 1 fourth x squared plus c. And to check my answer, so I don't need to write the problem with the answer, it's okay just to leave the answer kind of like that. To check, I should take the derivative of each term in my answer. So I'm going to take the derivative of 1 fourth x squared by going 2 times 1 fourth. I'm going to lower the exponent by 1. And then the derivative of any number, this, this represents any number without a letter. The derivative of any number without a letter is 0. For the 2 times 1 fourth, I'm going to cancel the 2 with the 4. The 4 will become a 2. The 2 will become a 1. I'll be left with 1 half. x to the 2 minus 1 power is x to the first power, which is just x, x and the 0 can go away. And that's exactly what was under the radical. So I did my integral perfectly. Problem 6, it might be easier if I rewrote this a little bit differently. When, I, when I'm doing problem 6, that 7 doesn't have an x term written with it, and that makes it hard for me to know how do I add 1 to the exponent and divide by the new exponent when there isn't an exponent to add to. So I can rewrite problem 6 as 7x to the 0, because x to the 0 is equal to 1. This is really 7 times 1, so it's really just 7. So now I'm going to apply my rule. I'm going to add 1 to the exponent, 0 plus 1 is 1, divide by the new exponent, tack on a plus c. So my answer to number 6, I don't need to write a denominator of 1, no, nor do I need to write an exponent of 1. So my answer is going to be 7x plus c, and I'm going to check again. And how do I check? I take the derivative of each piece here. The derivative of 7x is just 7. The derivative of 0, c, of any number without an x is just 0. That equals to 7. And that's exactly what I'm trying to find. When I take my answer and take the derivative of my answer, it should be what's in between the integral sign and the dx symbol. And that's exactly what happened here. If you have a, a, a sum or a difference, or if there's adding or subtracting within an integral, you can take the integral of each term separately. So I'm going to integrate 4x cubed, I'm going to integrate minus 3x squared, and I'm going to integrate plus 5. And that plus 5, I don't like it written like that, so I'm going to put the 5x to the 0 with it. And now I'm going to do each piece. So for this piece right here, I'm going to add 1 to the exponent. 3 plus 1 is 4. Divide by the new exponent. 
I'm going to bring down this minus sign and for this piece I'm going to add one to the exponent 2 plus 1 is 3 divide by the new exponent for the last piece I'm going to add one to the exponent 0 plus 1 is 1 divide by the new exponent tack on a plus C now I'm going to simplify the 4's cancel here I'm left with an X to the fourth the 3's cancel here I'm left with a minus X cubed the last fraction doesn't need to be written as a fraction because anything over 1 can be written without the denominator and then I get the plus C. So I believe this is my answer. This is the integral or antiderivative of the function that was given to me. And now I'm going to check the derivative of X to the fourth. I bring the 4 out front, lower the exponent by front by 1, bring down the minus the derivative of, of X cubed. I bring the 3 out front, I lower the exponent by 1, for the third piece, I multiply the exponent of 1 times 5, I lower the exponent to 0, and then any term that doesn't have an x has a derivative of 0. So this comes out to be 4x cubed minus 3x squared plus 1 times 5 is 5, and that's also equal to 1, so this is 1 times 5 times 1, which is plus 5, and then the plus 0 goes away because the derivative of my answer it is exactly what's between the integral symbol and the dx symbol that I've correctly done the integration. So I can check every single time in this section if I'm patient. Some of them are a little bit awkward to check and you don't have to check any of them. For both problems 9 in 10, we need to get it written as a fraction exponent to be able to add 1 to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. When you do your number 9, the way it's going to be written is x to the 2 thirds dx. For my problem 10, when it, you have a square root, there's an implied 2 there, and when you're getting rid of a radical, you always take the exponent of any term under the radical and divide it by the index. And my index is 2 because it's a square root. So this is both of our problems written without the radical. Just like with derivatives, we get rid of the radicals. I need to get rid of the radicals to integrate. Now I'm going to drop the integral symbol. And what am I going to do? I'm going to add 1 to the exponent. And instead of adding 1, I'm going to write it as 2 halves. I need to divide by the new exponent. And the new exponent's going to be 7 halves, because 5 halves plus 2 halves is 7 halves. And then I always tack on the plus C, because the derivative of any term without an X is 0. So this is going to give me X to the 7 halves. And I'm going to rewrite it as divided by 7 halves plus C to help know what to do with this. And then that's the same as X to the 7 halves times 2 sevenths plus C. And I'm going to move that 2 sevenths over. And that's going to be 2 sevenths X to the 7 halves plus C. I claim this is the answer. And I claim the derivative of this is exactly the square root of X to the fifth. So I'm going to check. And how do I check? I take the derivative using the general power rule. So I'm going to take the exponent 7 halves, multiply it by the coefficient 2 sevenths, and I'm going to lower the exponent by 1, so I'm going to go 7 halves minus 2 halves, and the plus C has a derivative of 0. The numbers in front of my x's are reciprocal, so they multiply out to be 1. The exponents subtract to be 5 halves, and the plus 0 doesn't need to be there, it just goes away. And now, the 1 I don't need, and I can write this in its radical form, it's going to be the second root of x to the fifth which is exactly what it needs to be because it's exactly what was in the original problem between the integral symbol and the dx. So every time I integrate or do an antiderivative, I can check my answer. If it's easy to just take the derivative of my answer, it, it should equal what's between the integral symbol and the d of x sign. Problem 12 has a fraction exponent without a radical. I'm going to leave it like that. So for problem 12, I'm going to add 1 to the new exponent. I'm going to add 1 to the old exponent. And instead of saying 1, I'm going to add 5 fifths. And I'm going to divide by the new exponent. 
And instead of dividing, instead of dividing by the new exponent, which is 8 fifths, that's what I'm supposed to do. Dividing by 8 fifths is the same as multiplying by 5 eighths. So maybe I should do that. It makes the work easier to find, follow. So instead of putting divi divided by 8 fifths, I'm going to multiply by 5 eighths. I'm going to tack on the plus C. So I think my answer can be gotten a lot easier instead of dividing by a fraction if I multiply by a reciprocal. I claim my answer is going to be 5 eighths y to the 8 fifths plus c. I'm going to check again, but I'm getting close to the end of checking. I'm kind of getting tired of checking. So to check this, I'll take the derivative of this. I'll take the coefficient 8 fifths, multiply it, the exponent 8 fifths, multiply it by the coefficient 5 eighths, lower the exponent by 1, and the derivative of any number without a letter is 0. For here, these are reciprocals. They multiply out to be 1. And then when I subtract the exponents, you get a 3 fifths. And the plus 0 goes away, because that's ex essentially exactly what was between the integral symbol and the dy. I know my answer is right. So the, the d, the letter that follows the d, will be the same as the letter in the problem. So it won't always be a dx. Okay, 14, I'm just not going to check because I'm getting tired of checking these. So I'm going to do two integrations or two antiderivatives. The first piece, I'm going to add one to the exponent. I'm going to go 2 thirds plus 3 thirds. The new exponent's going to be 5 thirds. Instead of dividing by 5 thirds, I'm going to multiply by 3 fifths. That's my prerogative. It's easier to multiply by a reciprocal than it is to divide by a fraction. I'm going to bring my minus sign over. And for the y to the 1 third, I'm going to add 3 thirds to its exponent. 1 third plus 3 thirds is 4 thirds. Instead of dividing by 4 thirds, I'm going to multiply by 3 fourths. And I tack on the plus c because the derivative of any term without an x is 0. I'm just going to simplify this. My answer is going to be 3 fifths y to the 5 thirds minus 3 fourths y to the 4 thirds plus c. I could check it. The derivative of this term is going to be that term. The derivative of that term is going to be that term. If I didn't make a mistake, the derivative of c is going to be 0. I'm not going to check probably many more because it just gets to be ridiculous in some sense. If I was going to do the derivative of number 16, I would rewrite it. Similarly, if I'm going to do the antiderivative, I'm going to rewrite number 16. And how I'm going to rewrite number 16 is so that x isn't buried in the denominator of, of a fraction. I'm going to move the x up to the numerator and make its exponent positive. Now I can drop the integral sign. I'm going to add 1 to the exponent. Negative 4 plus 1 is actually going to be negative 3. I'm going to divide by the new exponent, which is negative 3. I tack on the plus c part. So this is going to be the 3's are going to cancel. 3 divided by negative 3 is actually negative 1. So in for those, I'm going to write negative 1. And the x is going to have an exponent of negative 3. And I'm going to rewrite this as negative 1 over x cubed plus c. I think this is the right answer. Let me go ahead and just do the derivative real quickly. If, if I, and I'll do the derivative of this form because that's how I'd write it to take the derivative. To do the derivative of this, I'd go negative 3, the exponent, by negative times negative 1, the coefficient, and then x to the negative 3 minus 1 power. The derivative of the plus c is 0. This is going to give me 3x to the negative 4th, which is the same as 3 over x to the 4th, which is exactly what was between the integral sign and the d of x symbol. So I know my answer for 16 was correct. I think we're just about halfway done with the section, but the problems must get worse. I'm going to have to be very careful on 18 when I rewrite it. It needs to be rewritten because of that x in the denominator. And when I rewrite it, the 4, unfortunately, is not going to move up to the numerator. Only the x is going to move up to the numerator. So I'm going to move the x up to the numerator and make its exponent negative. And 
when you have just no adding or subtracting in the numerator of a fraction and there's an x there, you're allowed to bring that x out in front of the fraction. And that's probably a better way to rewrite the integral. So now that I can add one to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. And I have fraction issues here. So instead of dividing by the new exponent, I might multiply by the new exponent's reciprocal. So I'm going to drop the integral sign. I'm going to add one to the new exponent. Negative 3 plus 1 equals negative 2. So my new exponent's going to be negative 2. I have my choice right now. I can divide by negative 2, which is the same as dividing by negative 2 over 1, or I can multiply by negative 1 half, which is the reciprocal of, of negative 2 over 1. That negative sign is movable. For me, I'd rather multiply by a fraction than divide because I already have a fraction there. So I'm using kind of being, in some sense, clever. I always tack on the plus C. And now I'm going to multiply. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. 2 times 4 is 8. So I get negative 3 eighths x to the negative 2 plus c. Generally, we don't want negative exponents in our answer. So I'm going to move the x down to the denominator and get its exponent positive again. And this would be the best answer for number 18. If you stopped short and left a negative exponent in your answer, I'd probably take a point off, but no more than a point. So your 17 should have exactly the same tricks. 20, we pick up a new letter. It's hardly that big of a deal. Um, I'm going to integrate term by term. As long as each term is separate and there isn't any multiplying or dividing, um, you can do term by term antiderivatives or term by term integration. So for the first one, I'm going to add 1 to negative 3. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. I'm going to divide by negative 2 then, which is going to be the new exponent. The second one, I'm going to add 1 to the exponent. Negative 2 plus 1 is going to be negative 1. I'm going to divide by the new exponent, negative 1. I drop that symbol. I drop that symbol. I pluck on a plus c. This is going to give me 7z to the negative 2 over negative 2 plus, I'm going to simplify, well, I'll leave it like this, 5z to the negative 1 over negative 1 plus c. I'm going to move the z's down to the denominator, so I'm going to get 7 over negative 2z squared plus 5 over negative 1z to the first plus c. And now, this is okay. This 5 divided by negative 1 is negative 5. And the negative here can be moved in front or up to the numerator. So the, for the first term, it's OK to leave the negative in the denominator, but it looks kind of odd. Either move it up to the numerator or put it in front of the fraction. The second one, 5 divided by negative 1 is negative 5. This would be an OK way to write the answer. And probably the best way is to change this plus a negative to a minus. So this would I would live with this for an answer. I would live with this for an answer. and. Probably, if you look at my answer key to, a, if this was a problem that I wrote an answer key to, I would write this. The higher you get in calculus, the more often you do perfect calculus and you check your answer and it doesn't look like mine or it doesn't look like the author that wrote, wrote a book. This is because there's different ways to simplify. And for some problems, there's different ways to get to the final answer. So if you're going through this section and you're checking your answers and they don't look exactly like mine, but they look kind of like mine, then try to see if you can do extra algebra with your answer to get it to look like mine. Um, and if you can't, then bring it to me and I'll try to see if you're really right and you just couldn't simplify it the way I did it or if you have a mistake. But Try to get your answers to look just like mine when you're doing your problems, just so you're doing the simplification that we kind of want you to do. The next few problems have multiplication between the um, integral sign and the d something sign. I need to get rid of that multiplication before I find the antiderivative. So for this one, I need to go 4y times y cubed. I'm going to add the exponents on the y's and get a 4y to the fourth. Then I'm going to do 4y times 3y, multiply the 4 and the 3 and get 12, multiply the y and the y and get y squared, and then 4y times minus 4 is minus 16y. If you have multiplication, 
then you have to do something like so, like a reverse product rule and that is really complicated when it comes to antiderivatives so generally we want to try to get all the indi all the multiplication and division gone from a problem so we could just use the you know kind of the reverse of the general power rule to integrate so now i'm going to drop my integral symbol and i'm going to add one to the exponent for each of these four plus one is five divide by the new exponent second piece add one to the exponent two plus one is three divide by the new exponent last piece bring the minus sign down Add one to the new exponent. The exponent was one. When I add one to it, you get a two. Divide by the new exponent. Tack on your plus c. c. And I'm going to write these kind of nicely. This first one I'm going to write as four fifths y to the fifth. But if you left the first term written just how it was, it's fine. It's just um, this is just another way to write it. This way is easier to take the derivative for me. That's why I usually bring the y out of the numerator. Middle piece is going to be plus four y cubed third piece is minus 8y squared, and the last piece is my plus c, and that's the answer for 22. You have to do the same for 21. You need to get rid of the multiplication. Otherwise, it's way more complicated, and I'm not sure I could even do it. In problem 24, as well as problem 23, there's a square, and a square implies multiplication. Somehow, if you left it with a square, you'd have to do a reverse chain rule, I guess. And I don't know that I could do this with a reverse chain rule. So I'm going to write it without the exponent, which gives me two parentheses that are identical that need to be multiplied. And I'm going to clear the parentheses by foiling. And then I'm going to combine like terms. I always should write equals be preceding each integral symbol because it equals the line above it. And then once I add one to the exponent and divide by the new exponent, I should stop writing the integral symbol. A lot of times I get sloppy, and I, I'm not that picky when on your test. So I'll kind of look at your answer. If it's right, it's fine. If you forget equal signs, like I often forget equal signs, it's OK. But if you don't drop the dx in the integral symbol, it's not good. You'll lose points. And if you don't put the plus c on, you'll lose points. So now I have the problem written so it's just three individual terms that I can add one to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. The last term is really 25x to the 0 because it doesn't have an x. I kind of need to think of that x. On the next line, when I start adding one to the exponent and dividing by the new exponent, then I don't write the integral symbol anymore. So this one, I'm going to add one to the exponent and get x to the fifth, divide by the new exponent and get 5. The alternative way to write that would be 1 fifth x to the fifth. and that I'm inconsistent on. That I'd probably leave x to the fifth over 5. But I'll do it. They're both OK for the first term. The second term, you add 1 to the new exponent, divide by the new exponent. And that one I'd probably write as 10 thirds x cubed. But what I have written would be completely fine. If you left it 10x cubed over 3, that's OK. The third piece is going to be 25x to the first over 1. You have a plus c. That's just 25x. You would definitely write the third term as just 25x. You definitely wouldn't write 25x to the first over 1. So this is probably the answer that I'd write on my answer key. If you had the first two terms different than my first two terms, then there were these first two terms, it'd be completely OK for problem 24. So I give 23 a go. We're getting close to the end of this section. So 26 also has multiplication in it, and multiplication just makes it hard to do antiderivatives. So I'm going to get rid of the multiplication by foiling. First are y times y, which is y squared. Outers are y times 7, which is plus 7y. Inners are minus 4 times y, which is minus 4y. Lasts are minus 4 times 7, which is minus 28. I'm going to combine the first and the last and get y squared plus 3y. And I'm going to make that 28 have a 28y to the 0 because it makes it easier for me to do the antiderivative when I see that. Still writing the antiderivative symbol. Probably should write equals because it equals the line above it. And now I've dropped the antiderivative symbol, but still write equals because these all are equal to each other. First one, add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. Second one has an exponent of 1. When I add 1 to the new exponent and divide by the new exponent, I get that. Last one, add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, 
tack on my plus C. This would be okay as long as you cleaned up the negative 28y to the first over 1 and just wrote, wrote that as minus 28y. And the alternative way to write this would be 1 third y cubed plus 3 halves y squared minus 28y plus c. So the first two pieces, if you wrote those in your answers, those would be interchangeable with my first two terms. Um, the third and the fourth term kind of should be like I have them written in this bottom line. The next two problems have fractions. And again, I don't do well unless each unless the problem is written as individual terms without any multiplication, without any division, I need to get rid of the division in problem 28. To get rid of the division, I'm going to separately write each term in the numerator over the denominator. And probably when I do that, it would be nice if I introduced a parentheses. The fraction bar made it so I didn't really need a parentheses to encapture everything that I'm integrating. But I probably, once I get rid of the big fraction, should introduce a parentheses, but it's not that big of a deal if you don't. Now I'm going to simplify this. I'm still writing the integral symbol because I'm not integrating yet. Here, the x's are going to cancel. This is going to reduce to 4x. There are two x's in the numerator, one in the denominator. There's one left in the numerator when I cancel. Middle term, the x's cancel. I'm left with just a minus 5. The last term, nothing cancels, but I'm going to bring the x up to the numerator and make it have an exponent of negative 1. I left myself some room here because that term didn't have an x. I'm going to insert that x to the 0 because it's easier for me to integrate a constant when I see the x. Now I'm going to drop the integral symbol. This x had an exponent of 1, so I'm going to add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent middle one, add one to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. Last one, add one to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. Doesn't work. This formula doesn't work when you have an x to the negative one. So I need to fix, figure out how to integrate this, which means we need one new rule to do this integration. And the new rule is going to have involve LNs. Because if I gave you, if I said find the derivative of the LN of x, you'd make a fraction. In the denominator, you'd put the argument x. In the numerator, you'd put the derivative of the denominator, which is 1. And that's x to the negative 1. It turns out that the deriv the integral of when you have a negative exponent is the natural log of x. Technically, natural logs are only defined for positive numbers. Usually, we tack on a natural log of the absolute value of x, but I'm generally very sloppy, and I don't leave that um, part. So when we have an integral that involves an x to the negative 1 power, we get a natural log. If I want to do my integral, this piece right here, I'm trying to do the integral of negative 3x to the negative 1 dx. It turns out that's just going to be negative 3 times the natural log of x. And I'll show you that's the case. Because the derivative of this, I leave the negative 3, and it's times the derivative of the ln of x, the derivative of ln of x, you get an x in the denominator, the derivative of x in the numerator, and that's going to be a 1 over x. And so this is going to give me minus 3 over x. So this piece right here does not equal that. This equals minus 3 times the natural log, I'll say, of the absolute value of x. So the answer that I should have is going to have a natural log in it. And I should probably, um, for your problem, I don't want those to be a natural log yet. When you do problem 27, just do those two terms right there. And, and we'll worry about natural logs later for you guys. M maybe later in the section, or the next section e either. So this is going to be 2x squared minus, I'm going to write 5 halves x minus 3 times the natural log of the absolute value of x 
plus c. So when you have an exponent of negative 1, the integral is the coefficient times the natural log of that number. So the, the, this is the formula. I should probably have a plus c in my formula. I forgot to do that. But we're going to need this formula. And more specifically, we're going to need this formula. The integral of a, a number, times x to the negative 1 dx is going to equal a times the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. So when the exponent is negative 1, adding 1 to the exponent and dividing by the new exponent gives me garbage because it gives me a fraction with a 0 in the denominator. That doesn't work. So immediately, if your work when you're simplifying produces an exponent of negative 1, when you have to integrate that term, the number stays in front of the natural log and the x to the negative 1 power integrates to the natural log of the absolute value of x. Forget the absolute value sign, hardly makes any difference to me. So I don't know if I even wrote my answer. Yeah, this is my answer to this problem then. And again, for your problem 27, just do the heck out that last term that I hacked out and don't worry about the natural log yet. It's kind of misplaced. That's okay. Before you see it, I'm going to change my uh, problem to make it better. All right, so 29 and 30. I just redid my 30 so it didn't come out to have another natural log. So this is my problem 30. The, the antiderivative of 2x to the 4 thirds plus 3x to the 2 thirds divided by x to the 4 thirds dx. Seems to me I forgot an x there. 3x to the 2 thirds. I'm going to write this problem as two fractions. I'm going to introduce a parenthesis. I should always put that equal sign that I often forget. So I'm going to write this as 2x to the 4 thirds divided by 4 thirds, uh, divided by x to the 4 thirds, plus 3x to the 2 thirds divided by x to the 4 thirds dx. And First fraction, the x to the 4 thirds cancel. You're just left with a 2. Second fraction, I'm going to subtract the exponents. 2 thirds minus 4 thirds is negative 2 thirds. It's better for me to leave the negative exponent than it is to make a positive exponent in a denominator of a fraction. That 2, because it doesn't have an x, I might want to add the x to the 0. It makes it easier for me to integrate. So now I have the problem written as separate terms as a number times x to some power. So I'm going to add 1 to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. And when I do that, I drop the integral symbol and I drop the dx symbol. Hmm, what is my new exponent? My new exponent, I have to add 3 thirds. And I'm going to get positive 1 third for my new exponent because negative 2 thirds plus 3 thirds is positive one-third. So I'm going to get 3x to the one-third. And instead of dividing by one-third, because I have a choice, I can divide by one-third, or I can multiply by the reciprocal of one-third, which is 3 over 1. It's better to multiply by 3 over 1 for this piece. So this one, when I do its antiderivative, or its integral, I get a new exponent of one-third. I multiply by the reciprocal of one-third, which is 3. So my answer, this first piece is just going to be 2x. The middle piece is going to be 9x to the 1 third. And then I have my plus c. Because the original problem had fraction exponents, there isn't any reason for me to put the radical notation. But if you wanted to make this equal to 2x plus 9 times the cube root of x to the first plus c, that would be completely fine. You could always change a fraction exponent into a radical. You don't need that exponent of 1. Um, if the initial problem was given as a radical, I would definitely write my answer as a, um, with a radical. And so, um, so that's optional here. So give 29 a go. It should be fairly similar to mine. We have just a few more problems. Um, my problem 32, the first term isn't written as a fraction. I need It is written as a fraction, and that's not helping me. I need to get the x out of the denominator and get rid of that fraction. The second piece doesn't have an x. I gave an x to the 0 power. Now it's set up so I can add 1 to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. 
first one, negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. I'm going to divide by negative 4. Second one, I get 3x to the first over 1. I tack on my plus c, and then I get negative 1 x to the negative 4 plus 3x plus c. Here I don't need to write the divide by 1, nor do I need to write the exponent of 1. Here 4 divided by 4 is negative 1. Generally we don't want negative exponents in our answer, so in my answer I'll have negative 1 over x to the 4th plus 3x plus c for my final answer. The last two problems, I'll do both of them. I've kind of already did, took, did one of them already. I've kind of done 34 already, and I'll also do 33. So for 31, the, the integral of 1 over x is the same as the integral of x to the negative 1 power dx, and that blows up. If you add 1 to the exponent and divide by the new exponent, you get garbage. And so when the exponent is negative 1, the integral is the natural log of x plus c. And this, again, it's more, it's more powerful to use this formula the integral of any number times x to the negative 1 power is going to be that number times the natural log of x plus c. That's one formula that we'll actually need. The rest of the problems, for the most part, we're going to add 1 to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. The other time we're not going to add 1 to the exponent and divide by the new exponent is when we have e's. So when we have 1 over x, which is the same as x to the negative 1, we can't integrate or find an antiderivative by adding 1 to the exponent and dividing by the new exponent. So that's one case. e to the x also is a special case. If I gave you the function y equal e to the x and I said find its derivative, you'd say, well, y prime is the derivative of the exponent, which is 1, times the e to the x function, and it's just going to be e to the x. The derivative, the integral of e to the x is just e to the x plus c. That's, there's, so there's going to be two formulas. And more powerfully, the integral of any number times e to the x dx is going to be that number times e to the x plus c. e to the x is always positive. We don't need an absolute value. It's just that with ln's, they don't exist for zeros in negative numbers, so there's some domain issues going on. So in this section, we actually have two, one formula that we beat the heck out of, the integral of a times x to the n dx equals a times x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus c. Add 1 to the new exponent, divide by the new exponent. That's what that says symbolically. The formulas that we didn't beat the heck out of is a times x to the negative 1 power dx. That's going to be a times the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. Again, forget the absolute value symbol. I'd never take a point off of your work. And the last formula that we Again, we haven't really done anything with it. I just wanted to make you aware of these. That they come up. So those are going to be the, I think, the only three formulas we get in this entire chapter to find antiderivatives. And the whole chapter is on antiderivatives. It's just that um, we're going to learn some techniques that are kind of funky at first to learn. But these are definitely all the, I, the, the, right now all I can think of, these are the anti-derivative formulas. And again, you don't have to have formulas memorized, you just have to know how they work. Um, this, this formula, maybe I'll have it memorized because it's kind of odd. But the other ones, I think, I just, I don't know, just well this one I definitely just work it. All right, that's got to be enough for right now. So we just have a handful of sections left before the end of the semester.